Good afternoon, so welcome back uh, to my channel. Uh, for those of you that do not know me, my name is Virgilia Avar, and I'm a cancer survivor. So I have done all of my chemotherapy treatment, and I'm also on uh, reconstruction surgery as now. So uh, I wanna tell you, sometimes I post in Spanish, sometimes I post in English, if you speak, uh, if you understand both of the language, I suggest you to see both. If not, just speak, choose whatever is convenient for you. So before I even go any farther, um, I'll ask you if you could subscribe to my channel. So if you could give it a like and also uh, leave your comment below. Uh, everything is much appreciated. So this afternoon, I want to talk to you about my chemotherapy treatment, how was the transition into that, and how I uh, proceeded to select uh, uh, my daughters, you know, so that is very important when it comes to uh, uh, cancer treatment. It is very important that you know your daughters and that you feel comfortable with your daughters. So let me tell you that um, uh, back in, uh, 2022, you know, so I got my first surgery, my double mastectomy. I got it on uh, December 7, 2021. So a month after, I was already scheduled to see uh, an oncologist. And uh, so that oncologist, I went to see it. But uh, so I made sure, you know, so that I was uh, understanding the procedures, the uh, treatment that they were gonna give me, you know, and things like that. So what happened is I walk into the facility, you know, that's a very uh, big facility, you know, so uh, for like, uh, you know, so oncologists, uh, they have all kind of doctors over there, uh, you know, so I live in Miami. So then uh, when, I, when I walk into that facility, so I have, uh, I have a physical done, so they, they did uh, like uh, physical, so they took my uh, vital signals and everything. So, so once I was ready to see the oncologist, uh, they put me in a room and the oncologist, she just came in. And uh, so I, uh, I was shocked to know when I saw her because she walked into the room and she started like talking uh, you know, so I mean, it's not talking about like, hello, how are you doing, anything like that. No, no, no. You know, she just started talking as soon as she got into the room and she started talking about uh, all of the procedures that are going to be getting done. Like she says, so you're going to get a chemo, so you're going to get a uh, 20, uh, 20 radiation and so forth and so forth. So uh, once she finished talking, I feel very discouraged and I and I told her and I said, you know what, I am very discouraged to her all that because uh, you don't know me and I don't know you. And I was expecting her as a professional, as an oncologist, as a doctor, to come and check on me because uh, as I mentioned, I, I did have a double mastectomy, it's a, you know, surgery, and I did have a big infection that infection was going all the way on the right side. And uh, so actually the uh, surgeon was treating that, um, uh, you know, infection. And uh, so I am not a medical doctor, but I'm not an idiot. I'm not an stupid either. And I knew that uh, she could not start and nobody, I was not allowed to start any kind of treatment on me, like chemotherapy treatment. That's a heavy treatment on top of an infection that I already have. In fact, I was taking about 3,000 milligrams of antibiotics because that infection was, it was pretty big. So uh, saying that, uh, I, at the end of the conversation with the doctor, I told her that she was not going to be my doctor. I said, from that day, I said, you are not going to be my doctor. So it doesn't mean that I refuse completely to take the chemotherapy treatment, but instead of uh, accepting someone that is coming uh, with all of these, uh, 
you know, so it, it, it's like it was in a classroom or something. I probably needed like a, a tape recorder to catch up on what you were saying. But a hundred percent, I say no, I will not take any treatment with uh, an infection that I, I did have, you know, by them. So then I proceeded, you know, so I came home and I decided to, uh, I decided to talk to uh, all the doctors, friends of mine, and also from the same facility, but uh, they were not involved with the case. And they recommended to me another uh, oncologist. That oncologist, she was uh, a little bit better, you know, so they all have their own problem, their own issue. You know, there's nobody that know my body better than myself. And I, uh, if you are going through the process, if you have a family member, uh, I tell you, so you are the one that know your body. So you know, if you have an infection, if something is going on, so you, you need to speak out. Because, you know, so before you know it, they put all of this treatment and then you are going to pay the consequences. So uh, going back to the oncologist, uh, the new oncologist, you know, so she came. I went to, uh, I, I make an appointment, you know, so it was a couple of weeks later. I make an appointment with her. So she came and uh, she sat down with me. And uh, so I, I uh, uh, she was telling me about the different options, how I was doing and things like that. So once she finished talking, I said, doctor, I do have a problem with uh, medication, including Tylenol. I'm now pretty good with medication and things like that. So then uh, she listens to me, which, you know, I appreciate it. And uh, so um, she told me, uh, so then if you have a problem with medication, that's not a problem because so what I will do in, in, instead of giving you eight chemotherapy, which is like a high concentration of uh, chemotherapy. I mean, uh, when we say chemotherapy, we're talking about um, many chemotherapy like uh, tasso, carboplatins, uh, uh, adromycin, and also immunotherapy, Keytruda. This is not counting the pre-medication. So everything is start like 7.30 a.m. in the morning and then finish up at uh, 4.30 in the, evening, in the afternoon. So I mean, it's a lot of chemicals that they put in the body. So, so the, uh, the oncologist and I have an agreement that she will do the 16 chemo. Uh, those 16 chemo, instead of going um, you know, so like, uh, like the other oncologist, she wanted me to do eight and that was going to be every 15 days. So this uh, oncologist told me, uh, so you're going to have 16, uh, chemo and, uh, so it's going to be weekly basis. So it means that she was going to divide one dosis by two. So I, I agree because then instead of getting all of that, high doses of chemicals in my body since I was so sensitive to, uh, uh, you know, so uh, medication. Uh, so I rather take like once a week. And uh, so it was, it was a good agreement. So it turns out like um, I will go uh, every week. In fact, uh, the facility was not too far away from my house. It was only uh, about 15 minutes away. I would say 20 minutes if there was any traffic. And uh, so for the first 11 chemo, I was able to go in my own. I was driving and I was coming back. Uh, so when I was, uh, 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 you know, so of course I will have like a very good breakfast in the morning. I was preparing uh, the uh, a, a juice like in a juicer, uh, so like beets, uh, kale, a spinach, all of that. It was ca kind of like a, a, a breakfast, but with a, a very good nutrition before I get all of this medication. So every day that I went to the facility, so they they did uh, like a physical. They took my uh, vital signs, and they also did. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, lab work so that that will um, the doctor wanted to make sure that my body was going to be able to take the uh, treatment for the day and uh, so once they did the uh, all of that including the lab work 
So then I was uh, taking my breakfast, you know, so I, I took my juice very early in the morning before I even go because it was not required to go uh, in an empty stomach. Of course not, because I'm going to take all of this medication. I will seal my stomach with a very good breakfast. So though uh, after that, uh, so uh, I made sure that, you know, so I have my breakfast like at least three eggs, minimum three eggs, either way, boil it. I will do them with a little spinach. Uh, well, I use something, an avocado on the side, but I never went to the facility uh, without uh, proper food in my stomach. So one of the things that I did, I was uh, taking a lot of water. I made sure that I take between 30 to 40 ounces of water uh, before I got out of that facility because all of that medication uh, the more water I was taking, the easier it was to flush it out. So um, I, I would say that I was pretty strong, you know, taking those uh, chemotherapy treatment, but I, I have to say that it had to deal with the nutrition that I was getting and also the hydration. Also, I have the doctor give me, giving me like half doses instead of giving me the complete doses, you know, so. Um, so I noticed one day that, um, uh, you know, so I went to my portal, you know, so, and I noticed one day that they had me registered with uh, 5.4, you know, that's high. I mean, uh, I was at some point, I would say when I was uh, 20, 25 years old, but at my age, 63 years old, definitely not. So I'm uh, probably five two, five two and a half. So then since I saw that in the portal and also I saw a little bit overweight than what I have, I remember for that uh, particular week, I went to the facility and I told the uh, person that uh, was uh, doing the physical for me, I said, there is no treatment today unless that you take my weight and you measure me because I saw in my portal the wrong information. So then uh, this man proceeded to uh, measure me and take my weight. And of course, so they, you know, he find out that there was like two inches more of uh, height. And they had, you know, so they say 5.4, opposed 5.2, it's two, two inches more of bones. And uh, you know, those bones, they weight. And you know, so uh, medication, they are, especially in chemotherapy, they are proportional uh, to the weight and the height of the person, right? So then uh, they, they put the right, uh, the right information on the computer. So when I saw the uh, oncologist that day, I addressed that issue as well. So what, what, what they did, they adjusted the, uh, the medication, you know, so they adjusted uh, by the few uh, uh, milligrams are uh, probably like 10, 15 milligrams, of all of this chemotherapy treatment. So as soon as they adjusted, I realized that uh, when I was coming out of treatment, even my mind, the clarity was much better. So nevertheless, uh, when I was at uh, chemotherapy 11, um, I was already like, you know, so tired. I mean, chemotherapy, it's a process that the more chemo you take, the worse you get, the worse you get. So when I was at 11, I would still like coming to my house by number 12. I was so confused already. I didn't even remember where I live or, you know, how to get home. So I have to ask for help from my son. So after that, I will arrange with some friends and some people from my church. Uh, the last uh, uh, five chemo, I will take a Uber in the morning and I have somebody pick me up in the afternoon and, and bring me back home. So, and uh, so those chemo, they were very, very heavy. At some point, I was at a point that I couldn't walk. I had to hold myself, you know, on the wall. Uh, some days, uh, uh, my, uh, my heartbeats, they were so high. My blood pressure was extremely high the blood sugar was extremely high, you know, so, but I keep an eyes on everything on me. 
So I remember that I was taking my blood pressure at least once or twice a day. And also I was taking also my blood sugar as well. Uh, my oncologist did new one, she didn't like that. She told me one day, why are you taking your blood pressure? And then I, I let her finish and I said, you know why I'm taking my blood pressure? Because my oncologist said so. He said, take your blood pressure because it's very important that your blood pressure doesn't go too high. And in fact, I do uh, have a, a, a blood pressure medication. It's only like five milligrams that the, uh, um, that, that the uh, uh, doctor prescribed me. He said this was for prevention because chemotherapy, it could damage a lot of organs. It, it, it could make like uh, a lot of uh, out of control, uh, blood pressure, sugar. For some people, they, they might be even experience uh, organ damage, you know. So I was, uh, I, I have to say that I was very blessed uh, and very lucky that I did not get organ damage, you know. So by the time of the completion of all of uh, my treatment, uh, my uh, cardiologist, uh, he decided to do, and uh, you know, his, uh, uh, office, he decided to do uh, an echocardiogram to compare the first one that was done from the beginning to the last one, and the difference was not too much. It was not so significant. So also the blood test and everything after the chemotherapy, so they were like pretty good, you know. So the lowest I get with the uh, chemotherapy treatment was like 10, you know, which is still pretty good. So in another word, with my nutrition and the care that I was doing, and also speaking out to the doctor, uh, my immune system never went too much down, you know, so uh, I'm not 100% still. I'm still tired. I have some days that I just have to go with the flow. Sometimes I feel like doing things. Sometimes I, I don't feel like doing anything. Uh, um, you know, I have to say my life changed forever. And uh, so I'm not the only one, like most of the uh, friends and uh, people that I talk to that have gone to chemo, they all say the same. So I realize that with chemo, so we have to slow down. You know, I appreciate uh, if you are so uh, kind and you uh, join my channel, please subscribe, uh, give me a thumbs up, and please leave your comment below. It is much appreciated. Uh, if you could share this information with other people, I appreciate it as well. So when I was in my chemo and all of my treatment, I was watching some other people video, but I also watched some other people how they deteriorated and how they died, and even friends and neighbors, how they died. And then I decided to uh, share my story that people can create awareness and they can help themselves because uh, I tell you, when, when we go to the doctor, so sometimes some doctors, I, I wouldn't say that all of the doctors, they look at us like ignorant because we are the patient and they are the doctors. So let me tell you, in my case, I'm not an ignorant. I did two, uh, 200 credits in medicine and my uh, husband, my father of my children, he was a doctor as well. So, I mean, uh, I do have a healthcare administration degree, which I don't exercise. However, I have applied that to my own family, my own children for prevention, and I also apply it to myself. So then, uh, you know, so in a new case, uh, if you don't have any, any of these, it doesn't matter. You know, so my suggestion to you is like, uh, you know your body, more than your daughter. Your daughter, you just met you, right? And maybe you know your daughter for a few years, but who is carrying your daughter? Who is carrying your body? Is that yourself or is that the daughter? Who can observe the changes in your body? Who feel the difference, the discomfort in your body? It's you, you know? So like in my case, I was always like paying attention, you know, with the chemo. So when I started getting, uh, like my mouth was getting black, you know, my tongue, my nails, I started losing uh, all of my hair. I started getting pain on my low back. 
uh, some days, one night, I couldn't even breathe. I remember it was I was taking a uh, dramycin, and uh, so I was supposed to take, uh, uh, you know, so claritin that it helps with the side effect, and I didn't take it because they didn't tell me, and I I was like no moving in my bed, and I feel so scared. It was 1 a.m. in the morning, and I had to call the facility, uh, actually University of Miami, that I was the one that was taking care of me. And I, when I called, they called my oncologist, and she thought that I was getting a heart attack. And I said, I'm not getting a heart attack, but I'm very afraid because I'm not moving, and I feel like my, my, my body is all in shock. So then she told me right away, so take two uh, claritin, take two Tylenol, like 500 milligrams, so then uh, the, the next day, like, you know, in the morning, like 5, 6 a.m. in the morning, she called again. But I, I realized that the side effect of the uh, chemotherapy that she, she gave me, uh, they were pretty strong. So then the following day, I went to the facility and they put a shot of Neulasta. You know, the Neulasta, uh, that also created all of that as well but uh, it also lowered the uh, white cells. So that is the reason why it's so important to keep a balance and a lot of good nutrition. You know, so the Neulast actually raised the uh, white cells and, uh, and uh, it, is, uh, it, con it helps to continue taking the treatment. I was very fortunate not to stop my treatment because uh, I have uh, a very low immune system, black count, red cells, white cells, uh, platelet counts. Everything was pretty much uh, normal to take the treatment. So I just thought about sharing this with you because uh, somebody might get help out there, you know, so just always have in mind. So I am my own advocate, you know, so I know my body more than anybody else. So the same thing with you. So if you go into the treatment, if you have a family member, so so you might want to consider that as well because uh, believe it or no, so uh, doctors are human and they could make mistakes. And uh, once a mistake is made on your body, it's your life. So you are putting your life, I'm putting my life in the hands of that doctor. So then any mistake, you know, that is, it could be devastating. Anyways, uh, so I hope that someone can get help, you know, with my story and uh, uh, make sure to give it a like and subscribe and I, I will see you next time.